Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. So this is about the bless and the curse, having a blessed life, a cursed life, a blessed marriage or a cursed marriage, and how people want the blessings of God, but they're not in alignment to receive the blessings of God. And that people are in alignment with the curses of God and that's how they receive them. So we're going to talk about how you receive the blessings of God in your life and your marriage and how you would receive the curses of God in your life and your marriage. All right. And this comes with a lot of obedience. So this is what God placed before all his creation in Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So God tells you, there's life set before you and death, blessings and curse. With life come blessings, with death come cursing. That's why he says, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So when you choose life, you and your seed may live. Now in Doctrine and Covenants 14 and 7, it says, and if you keep my commandments and endure to the end, you shall have eternal life, which is, which gift is the greatest of all gifts of God. So eternal life is the greatest gift that God could ever give you. So we're going to talk about in this, um, the blessings that come with marriage when you have the right spouse God gave you and the curses that come. So it's either you have a blessed husband or you have a cursed husband. It's either you have a blessed wife or a cursed wife. Because you're not in alignment with God's word. So you're in disobedience. Now, that thou may love the Lord thy God, and that thou may obey his voice, and that thou may cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days. That thou may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So not every marriage you see is a blessed marriage from God. And they don't fall into the blessings that God gives onto a marriage. Now, you must have read the book which of Deuteronomy chapter 28 to know what is the blessings and what is the curses. Joshua 8 and 34. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and curses, cursings according to all that is written in the book of law. So there is blessed people and there is cursed people. Now, Deuteronomy 11 and 27 tells you how to retain these blessings. And then I'm going to go read how you retain the blessings in your marriage. A, bl a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. So blessings only come when you obey God's voice. You obey God with the wife he's supposed, the wife he gave you, with the husband he gave you, with the marriage he gave you. That's the only way you retain the blessings that come with marriage. When you're with the wife that God gave you. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have known not. Now, if you're not blessed, that means you're cursed. Matthew 25 and 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Because with cursings come death. That's why in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, God says to you, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Why does God tell you to choose life? Because there's blessings with life. And he tells you not... He tells you to choose life. He gives you a good suggestion what to choose because with death is with cursing is death. Okay. Now these are the blessing. Look, the blessings come. If you obey this, this, this blessing comes upon you. If you obey Exodus 19 and five. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. That's the only way you become a peculiar treasure to God and above all people, when you obey his voice. Now, these are the blessings that are upon people who obey God's voice. Genesis 1 and 28. And God blessed them. Yes, God blessed all his creation in the beginning, but he also placed before them blessings and cursings if they don't follow his voice. 
obey his voice. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That is not for everybody. That's only for the people who walk in the obedience of God, who obey God's voice. They are fruitful. They multiply. They replenish the earth. They subdue it. They have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and everything that moves upon the earth. Not everyone has that. The people who walk in the blessings of God. Now, Job 36 and 11 to 12. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. That's why it tells you... um. God has delight in the prosperity of his servant because they're obeying him. He, he delights in people obeying his voice. But if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. How will you spend your days? If you, if you obey God in prosperity and your years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Now, Romans 6 and 16, know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey? His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now, Galatians 5 and 7, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Who told you to just marry anybody and not obey the truth to walk in the blessings that come with it? I'm going to read the marriage blessings. Now, Deuteronomy 28 and 1, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, so you need to diligently hearken unto God's voice, and you need to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. When will God set you on high? When you obey his voice. When will you get the blessings of God? When you're in alignment with the word, his commandments and obeying his voice. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy king and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall thou be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comes in and blessed shall thou be when thou goes out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou setst thy hand on to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall, so God will give you a land. All these blessings will take you when you obey God. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. Those blessings only come when you obey God. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Now, Deuteronomy 28 and 12, And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. You'll get good treasure from God when you obey him. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, these are the blessings that come with marriage. But if you don't have the wife that God gave you, then how are you going to have these blessings? Look at even with Isaac, he, his Abraham's servant prayed for him to have to get the wife from God, not just any wife, the one that God had for him. Let's read Genesis 24 and 12 before we read the marriage blessings that come with marriage when you're with your ordained spouse. God doesn't bless a mess. He's an author. He's not an author of confusion. Genesis 24 and 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me 
good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water. And, it, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou has appointed for thy servant Isaac. So your wife is appointed. Your wife is picked by God. All right? You're appointed for this is the wife God gave Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethel, son of Mal Mal Malchi, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulders. Do you see he prayed for his wife and God sent her? Adam, God gave him his wife. Adam didn't go looking for no wife. God gave him his wife. Isaac prayed, the, um, Abraham's servant prayed for Isaac and Isaac got his wife. Now, these are the blessings that come with marriage. Genesis 12 and 2 to 13. And I will make of thee a great nation that is with your ordained wife and your ordained husband. And I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Here is another blessing that comes with marriage. Genesis 24 and 14. And it, and let it come to pass that the damsel to who, no, sorry, Genesis 49 and 25. Forgive me. Even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the almighty who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lie under, blessings of the breasts for you to have children and ble and of the womb. So this, how would God bless your breasts and your womb if you're not mar in a marriage union and covenant with him, his covenant people? Now, this is another blessing that overtakes men when they have their right wife. Whosoever findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. Men get favor when they have a wife, but who? The wife God gave them, not just any wife. So you have, there's people, people married that are not of God. That's not a blessed union. That's not a blessed wife. There's men who married women who are not blessed, they're cursed. And there's women who married men who are not blessed and they're cursed. And they don't fall in alignment to get the blessings of God in Genesis um, 40. 9 and 25 in Genesis 49 and 26. There's more to that. I don't know. It just erased off of my computer for some reason. Um, Romans 2 and 8. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. The truth of knowing that God placed before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. And you have to fall in line with, with obeying his voice to receive these blessings. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth. But obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So Romans 2 and 10, but glory, honor and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Now Deuteronomy 28 and 62, and you shall be left few in number, whereas you Whereas the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou would not, wouldst not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good, because he blessed you, he wants you to prosper. He delights in the prosperity of his fervent. As the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you with who? The woman that he gave you, with the man that he gave you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked up from the land where thou goest to possess it. Hebrews 5 and 8 to 5 and 9. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. So who is God the author of whose story? Of those who obey him. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now, more blessings we're going to talk about. Proverbs 10 and 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just. 
but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Genesis 27 and 8. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Proverbs 28 and 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, not an adulterous man, not a man with two and three and four wives. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Now, Acts 5 and 32. And we are his witnesses of this, these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit unto the Holy Spirit whom God has given to them that obey him. So not everybody has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is only given to people who obey God. Genesis 49 and 25, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee and by the almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lie under, blessings of the breast and blessings of the womb. Psalms 21 and 3, for thou prevents him with the blessings of goodness. When do you have blessings of goodness? When you're walking in righteousness, thou sets a crown of pure gold on his head. Now, Ephesians 1 and 3, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, Jeremiah 12 and 17, but if they will not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. So God wins. His word never returns unto him void. Whether his creation wants to obey him or not, it doesn't matter. He will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation who doesn't obey him. Now Acts 5 and 29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So we better obey God in how to retain his blessings. We better um, obey God in how we should seek our our marriage partners. Jeremiah in 42 and 6 says, Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Now, I'm just going to go over in some scriptures about eternal life. Doctrine and Covenants 59 and 23. But learn that he who does the works of righteousness shall receive his reward even peace in this world so and eternal life in the world to come so if if you if you do righteousness you're going to receive your reward and you'll have peace in this world those whose minds are stayed on god walk in perfect peace he keeps them walking in perfect peace that's a scripture from the king james bible it is the truth doctrine and covenant 66 and 12 continue in these things Unto the end, and you shall have a crown of eternal life at the right hand of my Father, who is full of grace and truth. Doctrine and Covenants 81 and 6. And if thou art faithful unto the end, thou shalt have a crown of immorality and eternal life in the mansions which I have prepared in the house of my Father. Doctrine and Covenants 132 and 24. This is eternal lives to know that, know the only wise and true God and Christ whom he has sent, I am he. Receive ye therefore my law. Receive the law of truth and love. Doctrine and Covenants 20 and 14. And those who receive it in faith and work righteousness shall receive a crown of eternal life. Doctrine and Covenants 98 and 20. For they do not forsake their sins and their wicked ways, the pride of their hearts and their covetousness and all their detestable things and observe the words of wisdom and eternal life, which I given unto them. That is what you need to observe. Eternal life, the words that give you life. Doctrine and Covenants 131 and 5. The more... The more sure word of prophecy means a man's knowing that he is sealed up onto eternal life by revelation and the spirit of prophecy through the power of the holy priesthood. Now, I hope that gives you a great understanding. If you're not walking in the blessings and you're walking in the curses and God placed before you life and death, life comes with blessings, death comes with curses. Have a blessed day.